Lady Jane Grey is remembered in history as the Nine Day Queen. She was named the successor of Edward VI, the son of Henry VIII, as she was his cousin. Edward wished for the next Tudor monarch to be a Protestant, and wished for it to be a male, however he could not find a man to take the throne. He turned his attention to Jane, and it's clear that she did not wish to become the monarch and ruler of England. When she was summoned and named the Queen, she was visibly distressed, and she did not wish for any of this. It's believed that Jane knew the troubles that she would encounter as being the successor and also being a ruler. However, within a year of being named the Queen of England, Jane was brought to Tower Green and was met by an executioner armed with an axe. The execution of Lady Jane Grey was a shocking moment in English history, as a young girl of around 16 was decapitated on the orders of Bloody Mary I. However, in one country park in Leicestershire, with very strong links to the nine-day queen, they took a remarkable action to commemorate and remember the beheaded Queen of England. So join us today as we look at the incredible execution of trees, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Bradgate Park in Leicestershire is known locally as the former house and birthplace of Lady Jane Grey and the Grey family. It's celebrated in the area as a beautiful park where deer run free. However, remarkably, when Lady Jane Grey had her head struck off inside the Tower of London, the groundskeepers and gardeners made huge steps to show their commemoration of Jane, the young teenage girl, and also air their discontent against Mary I and celebrate the former girl who was born inside of the house there. Sir John Grey of Gruby married Elizabeth Woodville in 1452, but following his death, Elizabeth married Edward IV, the King of England, who during the Wars of the Roses deposed Henry VI. John and Elizabeth's son Thomas was tasked with building Bradgate House, and it was completed around the year 1520. Surrounding the house was a remarkable deer park that had been enclosed, and inside were many different oak trees. Bradgate House today is a ruined building that looks amazing. However, when it was built during the reign of King Henry VIII, it was one of the most beautiful and spectacular houses in the country. It looks like a Tudor palace with the brickwork, and once it was built it was a remarkable home to the Greys, who were considered a prominent family within society. The Greys also had very close links to the royalty. Sir Thomas Grey died in 1530, and was succeeded by his son, Henry, the third Marquess of Dorset, and he married Frances, the daughter of the Duke of Suffolk, and also Mary Tudor, the younger sister of King Henry VIII. It's alleged that Lady Jane Grey was born inside of Bradgate House, with her father being Henry Grey, the first Duke of Suffolk, and her mother being Lady Frances Brandon. It's believed that inside of Bradgate House, in October 1537, Jane was born inside one of the buildings that stood there. The links to Lady Jane continued following her birth, as it's believed that Bradgate was her childhood home, and that she was educated inside the ruins for a while. Jane is considered to have been one of the most learned and talented young women of her time, and she was given a very excellent humanist education. It was believed that this was prepared for the office of one day going to court, to marry possibly a wealthy and promising courtier, as was hoped for any young woman of the nobility by their fathers and families in the day. She was given an education where she learned to speak Latin and Greek, and also studied Italian and Hebrew. It's believed that through the influence of her father and her tutors, she also became a devout Protestant, and that she even wrote with Heinrich Bullinger. When scholars visited Bradgate House and the Greys, they found Jane with her head in a book, reading Plato, and it was said of the family, For when I am in the presence either of father or mother, whether I speak, keep silent, sit, stand or go, eat, drink, be merry or sad, be sewing, playing, dancing or doing anything else, I must do it, as it was such weight to measure a number, even so perfectly, as God made the world. Or else I am so sharply taunted, so cruelly threatened, yet presently with sometimes with pinches, nips and bobs and other ways, which I will not name for the honour I bear them, that I think myself in hell. With this it's considered that the Greys, and the house that Jane grew up in, was a house of perfectionists, and there was a great emphasis on doing things correctly. Jane, it's believed, was part of this, and she was later sent to live in the household of Edward VI's great-uncle Thomas Seymour, who later married Catherine Parr. Edward VI named Jane his successor, and with this disinherited his half-sisters Mary and Elizabeth. 
Jane did have royal blood, being the great-grandchild of Henry VII, and when she became queen, she was celebrated by Protestants, and it's believed she would continue the work of the Reformation. But shortly after being crowned, Mary rose up and decided to challenge Jane, but very quickly the Privy Council changed their support from Jane to Mary, to save their skin, and to hopefully escape treason charges. Mary was crowned queen, with Jane then being sentenced to death, but she was briefly pardoned. But as rebellions rose up against Mary I, then Jane was deemed too dangerous to be imprisoned at the Tower, and therefore Mary signed her death warrant. Jane was taken on the morning of the 12th of February 1554, out to Tower Green. She had previously witnessed the decapitated corpse of her husband Guildford, who had been executed on Tower Hill, and within an hour of doing so, she was then brought to her own execution. It's believed that Jane, the girl of around 16 or 17, met her death with calm up until the final moments, where she panicked trying to find the executioner's block. When everything was prepared, an axeman took her head clean off with one swipe of the axe. But following the execution, those gardeners and groundskeepers who worked at her former childhood home of Bradgate House and Bradgate Park, once they heard the news, made a remarkable tribute to the young girl, which today, almost 500 years later, is still visible. The groundskeepers found out that their former master's daughter Jane had been beheaded inside of the Tower of London at the behest of Queen Mary. To come up with a fitting tribute to commemorate the young girl, they took the painstaking job of pollarding each of the oak trees found inside of the 850-acre Bradgate Park and Deer Park. They took their axes to cutting off the tops of the oak trees, in a similar manner to how Lady Jane Grey was beheaded by the axe, and this took a long time to do so. Cutting the head or top of the trees off was meant to symbolise the loss of Lady Jane Grey's head inside of the Tower of London on that February morning. Today, almost 500 years on, there are many oak trees found inside of Bradgate Park that display signs of the pollarding, which took place following the nine-day Queen's execution. These centuries-old trees have seen many kings, queens, prime ministers, governments and changes to the English landscape and history, but they remain a constant reminder of the execution of Lady Jane Grey. The symbolic beheading of these trees inside of Bradgate Park today is still seen by hundreds of visitors who go for a walk inside of the beautiful parkland. But the story of the trees is a forgotten element of the history. Interestingly, the oak trees, that can still be seen today with their different shapes, brought on by the symbolic beheading, were possibly seen by young Lady Jane herself when she lived at Bradgate House. It's possible that she may have sat under these oak trees, reading her book or learning from scholars. It's also believed that she may have played with her sisters near to the oak trees, the same trees that today represent the brutal beheading and death of the young girl who once sat beneath them. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.